He's back up and running, fellas. The last attempt of this uh, English bitter did not go well, and uh, I was a little bit reluctant this morning to <laughs> prep all the grains and get them in the uh, in the mash tun. We've got the, the salt additions in there and the lactic acid because I just wanted to check <laughs> that the control panel wasn't going to melt again. Obviously, the last video that went up was the disaster brew. The disaster brew day. I messaged Harry just to get his thoughts on, on what needed to happen with the control panel and it was just a case of swapping out the uh, the bus bars because the bus bars that we were using were 15 amp and they were fine until we started doing the method of using the boil pot to heat up the mash water as well as the HLT to heat up the Herms um, water and sparge at the same time which meant that there was three elements running at the same time and it was too much too much we ended up with like three elements worth of power running through the jumper cables and um, it was too much for them so after talking to Harry about it and he said yeah upgrade so we ended up I ended up getting the same bus bars um, that Harry uses massively bigger if you can see the, the comparison here and these don't have we don't have to do the, the jumper cables these have the these have the rack that does the jumping for us and uh, there they are Well, it's a bit dark in there, but there we go. You get the you get the picture. I swapped out the uh, the switch as well because that was plain up. So new switch, new jump, uh, new uh, new bus pass. Trying something a little bit different this time. Adding the salt additions first. Uh, salt additions really, uh, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be uh, mixing it up. But I just wanted to get the lactic acid in there first so that as the water's running in it's mixing it well so that we can get a quicker pH reading and it's not reliant on me stirring it stirring it in. So anyway, fingers crossed, nothing goes wrong with the control panel. I don't want another wasted mash. There we go, 3.2 kilograms of marisotta. And then we've got some black patent. We've got 30 grams of black patent, 200 grams of uh, wheat malt, 200 grams of biscuit malt, and 200 grams of caramunic going in there. Going here today, 20 litres in the boil pot. We need 12, 12 litres to go into the mash. Started as well using uh, using this thermometer to check in and around the mash because the uh, obviously the probe uh, the thermal well that's that's in the mash tun is just in one position. So when the water's in, when we've doled in, I'll give her a stir and then we'll we'll check all around all the way around with this. Um, I might have to put some cold in there. But uh, that's better than trying to warm it up quickly through the, the Herms coil. I really want to just use the Herms coil for a constant recirc and just maintaining a temperature. She's filling up. She's filling up for that. A couple more litres 
then we should be good to give her a stir around. I don't want to stir it prematurely, I did that last time, and I ended up with dough balls, which I've never had, which I, I haven't had in a long, long time. Because uh, obviously we're under letting, so it's just slowly sleep, steeping through the, the grain there. Keeping an eye on it because uh, I'm a little bit nervous that something's going to go on this. But anyway, let's pick that up a little bit, put the lid on her. Um, just done a pH reading as well, and uh, let's have a look. Can you see it? 5.21. That is on the friggin' money. That's a sigh of relief. So all the uh, effort that we put into the water, learning more about the, the water, has paid off. So far so good, I don't want to jinx it, but uh, we are just on a mash out. And, uh, and then we're going to be getting into the boil pot and cracking on with that. But uh, so far, so good. Look at the clarity. Oh, oh. It's nice and clear. Cleared out beautiful that has. Manifold's just been fantastic. Get the lid on as well. It's working exactly how I wanted it to. So um, that's been like no headache at all. Of course, now winter's come in. I'm wanting that lid on the match tongue, so it's, it's been a good thing to, to be able to get the lid back on it. But yeah, the manifold's working well. Pleased that we hit our uh, mash pH and uh, yeah, the only other snag that I had was after I fixed the control panel, I came in one day and realised that the snub nose has rubbed a hole through it. Uh, where the stand, uh, I think it's where the stand met the, uh, the snub nose. For whatever reason it, it failed on, on a little point. And so the snub nose I cannot use can't use it. Although we have we have something else come in. Um, Daniel at Keg King has been organising some new products to, to come and um, hopefully it won't be too long before we take the delivery of the new Apollo fermenter. And I'm really looking forward to getting that here, getting it getting it tried out because uh, well I'm gonna miss not having pressure fermentation so for the bitter we are back to basics back to the brew bucket I've got to drill a hole in that lid and, and get the uh, airlock fitted but, uh, but at least now I've got a bigger fridge I can put a traditional airlock in the top without having to manufacture a blow-off tube because I've got this, the head the head room the head space uh, so we're back to the bucket, um, but yeah, tilt is getting ready, it's sat in some star sand there, so we, we appear to be ticking along pretty nicely at the minute, fingers crossed, don't want to jinx it, but yeah, yeah. Uh, what we got? <laughs> Just like that, eh? Yeah. It's like I timed it perfectly. Get me a job on tell then. Mash your house done, let's let's start transferring it.
lovely clear water going in there. Marvellous job. Right, that's the next step done. We need to get the hops away down next. Uh, we're going for East Kent Goldings for this. We are having a 60 minute edition, 30 grams of East Kent, and then we're having a, a 50 gram uh, Whirlpool, and that's it. Things are looking good. Just getting past that hot break, we've, uh, we've set up Beersmith um, properly this time with the uh, dead space etc. So there's more in the boil pot allowing for loss in the boil pot, loss in the fermenter to get a final product uh, volume that we need. So we've got more in there and I'm just watching it. Starting to creep again. But once we get past that hot rate, we should be good. So I've just knocked her down to 80% output. We'll see how she goes with that. It's quite the rolling boil, I don't want it uh, boiling like that, really. So I might knock it down again. I only got one element on as well, so. Anyway, I think that's good enough to chuck the hops in there. So we've got uh, 30 grams of East Kent Goldings going in. That's it, I think we're past the hot break now. Just gonna adjust that boil, don't really want it boiling too vigorously. Although it's calming down a bit now. Ah, it looks all right. Another 30 seconds and we'll be sounding the alarm for the for the protoflock. 10 minute protoflock and then we'll start a whirlpooling. Let's get one out ready. I didn't have my bloody alarm on, did I? Idiot. Good job I was watching it. Anyway, protoflock in for 10 minutes. That's it. Let's bash this down. 10 minutes. Put the alarm on. There we go. Keep losing my bloody camera. Oh. Right, kill the boil, turn off of that. Sit then, 10 minutes for the uh, protoflock. So uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a chill down to 80 and then chuck in the, what you call it, the whirlpool hoppage. Boop. Right, so we're at uh, 79. Whirlpool's been giving it a good go. So I'm going to kill the pump, I think. Now the whirlpool's going and chuck these hops in. Very good. Put the lid back on and set the timer for 30 minutes. That's it. Half an hour's up. Let's get this uh, chiller on. Sit. Right, where's my tripod? My tripod, the tripod. 
beautifully straight in the air. Just like hit a bow and throw. Excellent. That's a good flow. I've gone over to the little arc. Let's slow it down. Right, so we should be collecting. Let's have a look. 21 litres. I have a feeling we may have a little extra. It smells good. No, no, I think we'll be on. We'll be on the money there. That's 21 litres there. That's 22. Beautiful. A little bit extra. A little bit extra. I want the hydrometer reading. So, what I'm going to do is get ready. I'm going to pitch the yeast, pop the tilt in, and uh, put her into bed. It should be good enough. Beautiful, right, pop that over there for when we've done. So the yeast I'm using is the same as what we used in the Coconut Sharpie California Ale Yeast WLP 001. Oh, that smells good. Seems so old school having this set up. Because the yeast is a tilt -all. Right, she's ready for bed. I'll sort out that. That's it. She's in bed. The tilt has been uh, set up to start logging. The tilt is saying we're at 10.40, so let's have a look. A target of 10.41. Careful! Excuse the noise, I'm just recirculating some caustic on the cleanup, but uh, we took a reading and we are sitting at 10.40. Not a very good shot, put the light behind me, but. Uh, Take my word for it, we're on 1040 on the uh, hydrometer. So we are one point, one point off. We wanted 1041, but um, we ended up collecting an extra litre. So um, that's not bad. One point off for an extra litre. Right, put that down there. 22 litres, 1040. Never fails to impress me. Hop stopper. Am I in the way? Oh yeah. Hot hop stopper, hop, happy stopper. So that's it fellas, that's the brew day done. Finally, we've managed to get her in to the fermenter after the failed attempt last week. Oh my god. The uh, fossil trap. Best bitter is in bed, and I've set up the tilt. It's sending readings. Actually, actually, uh, I'm actually quite pleased with how today went, considering that we had to be mindful of the control panel. It was on. It was in the back of my mind. So I kept it, kept monitoring it, kept watching it, and uh, I think we've sorted it. But that's it. I'm all cleaned up. Everything's away. Just need to sort the floor out, there's a bit of water on there, but I'll sort it out. So yeah, um, regards to the actual brew date with the numbers and everything, uh, we collected an extra litre, so we took an extra litre into the boil pot from the mash tun. And uh, we were looking for 10.41, we got 10.40, so an extra litre, but we were down a point. So uh, yeah, actual measured batch volume, 22 litres, target was 21. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. 
uh, I'm, I'm more happy overall that we, it looks like we seem to have nobbled the water on the head. Um, so after that evening of talking to Harry about the water profiling, it seems like we've, we've hit it. Um, and I like the fact that I was putting the lactic acid in first so the water was straight away running through it as it was filling up the mash tun. Um, so it, I think it quick, quickened up or made a more accurate uh, mash reading after I'd uh, delved in. So yeah, 5.21 pH, uh, we were looking for 5.2, so I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that. Right, we'll see how this goes, it shouldn't be too long at fermenting out, I need it ready uh, for the 5th of November, but I shall keep you posted. But that's it fellas, as always, don't forget to like and don't forget to like and subscribe, don't forget to say until next time. Oh, yeah.